Hello, my dearest confidants. As you know, we had ducklings born this past week. And um, if you've been following me for a while, you know that our animals are meant to coexist with us in a symbiotic relationship. And um, I've never had, uh, I've never had something hard happen to one of my animals that I had to be the one to make the decision for and take care of myself. And we had a duckling that was separated from the mama section of the coop, separated from everyone else for an undetermined amount of time. And when I found it, um, I only found it because I was collecting eggs and it made a little chirp. And I was like, mm, that sounded like it was right in front of me. Let me check that out. So I went to that side of the coop and um, I found it and it was kind of trapped in there. And so I got it out. I noticed that it wasn't warm, um, but it was still very active. And so I put it back in with Mama, and I noticed that it was doing this. And so um, I knew something was wrong with it, right? I wasn't quite sure exactly what. I mean, it had been separated from mom for who knows how long. And like I said, it wasn't warm. Um, and it could have been having a seizure. It could have gotten into something that was poisonous. Um, or it could have had a traumatic brain injury and suffering brain damage. And so I kept it inside overnight. I had a heating blanket on it and um, I was giving it some nutri drench water and it actually was eating a little bit. Now, granted, with the head going back like that, I had to help it, um, but it was responsive to food and water and um, snuggling up in the blankets. The next morning, I took it out and it was not the same duckling. Um, it was hardly moving, hardly struggling, barely peeping. And, um, you know, I said to myself, if, if I need to, I'm going to have to do the hard thing. And I've had an animal in the past that was attacked that, um, a cat that suffered brain damage and we took it to the vet and the vet took care of it. So even though it was really sad, we'd had the cat for a long time, I didn't have to do the deed myself. And so, um, it was really hard, uh, to cull an animal. And it's something that I don't want to have to do again, but I will say that now that I've done it, um, I know that I was doing not just the duckling a favor, but everybody else too, because of how much time and energy that duckling would have taken for me to sustain its life. Um, I have no idea if it was in pain. It wasn't making any painful noises, except for when it could hear mama, then it would scream for mom. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, it could have lived its life in a semi-vegetative state and I could have cared for it and babied it and made it my special needs duck. Um, but I have other animals that I have to care for as well. And so it was a really hard decision and I cried about it, um, but I was able to do it. And so the point of this video is, you, you know, one, you don't know what you can do until you have to do it. Um, I learned that I am really strong and that I can do the right thing for my animals, even if it means it's going to hurt me. Um, you know, I had a dog pass before that also was very significantly sick and the vet kept telling me, oh, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. And the day that we took it to the vet and they told me that again, the dog died that same day when we got it home. And so, you know, I promised myself that I would not let my animals suffer. And so when we took the cat to the vet, that was years ago and I, there's no way I could have dispatched that animal on my own. I've come leaps and bounds since then. And to be able to do that with a duckling, we've had a couple of ducks pass. Um, and it's hard to tell sometimes when an animal's in pain because they don't always tell you. They try to hide it because they don't want to be separated from the flock. They don't want to have other animals, um, uh, predators come after them and so they try to keep up and maintain a sense of normalcy as long as possible so it's up to us to know what those identifying factors are and to act accordingly and then of course if you can't 
um, my suggestion is to have someone in your life, whether it be a vet or a good friend that can dispatch animals for you if they need to be dispatched. So yeah, it was, it was really hard, but now I know that I can do it if I need to. And we have 30 ducks right now with the subtraction of that one. We've got the peafowl and we've got the horses, which if it comes down to it and that's something that I have to take care of myself, that's going to take some planning and effort because that, that's a lot. Um, and then we have, of course, the dogs, the cats, and the pigs. So anyways, I love you, my dearest confidant. I just wanted to give you an update. Um, since then, we've secured the fence better for the rest of the ducklings. Um, and by the way, I've used that fencing many times with no issues in the past. And so this was like a one-off. Um, I guess it was, you know, the universe trying to prepare me for the next phase of my life, maybe, because, um, yeah, I was surprised to see that duckling over there separated from everybody else. But all the other ducklings are doing fine. Um, and, yeah. So, I love you, my dearest confidant. Until next time.